So I consider myself a pretty frugal guy. And I think that's because I grew up in a family with nine kids. So there was 11 of us who came from a different country and lived in a tiny apartment when we first came to America. So the idea of propagating more plants, something from nothing, really strikes true to how I was raised. Now, I love the heuristic approach of uh, growing plants and doing bonsai. You know, I want to make the mistake on my own and, and do trial and error in case, you know, there's no information out there. Uh, I want to see if it works. So here, I'm going to show you this video on um, air layering Japanese black pine. So there's a couple videos already there on YouTube that show you how to do this. And you, know, you can pretty much use the same pr basic principles of air layering any type of tree, whether it's deciduous or conifer. So I have tried this before on a different conifer and I failed. So I'm not saying that the success rate for this method is 100% or anything, but it does work. Of course, I wanted to do this for myself. The question is, is it even worth it? Japanese black pine seedlings are very, very easy to come by. So the only time I can see where it is worth it is if you are trying to get, let's say, a ungrafted cork bark Japanese black pine and you, you took you know, one of the, uh, the branches and air layered that. The other time would be if, you know, you were trying to um, air layer a part of the tree that had really good movement on it. But otherwise, the tree that I'm using here wasn't because I wanted to save this top. I just wanted to see whether or not I could air layer a Japanese black pine. So what I did here was I basically took some rooting powder and rooting gel and then painted it over the area where I wanted roots to come out of. Um, I left it on there actually for about 30 minutes, 45 minutes or so before I came back to it and then cut that ring right below that part where I put the rooting hormone. So after I girdled the tree, I used the same method as every single other air layer that I've done. Take the moist sphagnum peat moss and then wrapped it in a uh, piece of plastic Try to wrap it really tight and make sure your peat moss is not overly wet. Moist, but not dripping. So I guess the only trick here, if there is any, that's different from how I usually air layer is that I double, triple, quadruple the amount of rooting hormone that I put onto the tree. Now, uh, there are different varying strengths of hormone that you can get out there. This is very uh, standard uh, Clonex that I use and then some of the powdery stuff I think I got from Lowe's. And here, this is a technique that I actually learned from rooting figs, um, scarring the area where you apply the rooting hormone so that it um, really seeps into the bark. So it is really, really crucial that when you wrap your moss in the plastic bag around your cut point, make sure you make it really airtight, right? Keep the moisture level so that it's moist and not wet and make sure everything is airtight. You don't want water leaking out, you don't want water leaking in, and you don't water, want that moss in there to dry up either. So the thing about trying to air layer conifers is that it does take a long time, especially with black pines. You know, some people say it takes over a year, two years, three years. Mine took about a year and a half. All right, so it's been over a year since I put this air layer onto this uh, black pine and you know, I have some success here see, see that root there's a few more down here all right so I think it's time to remove this air layer and see what this looks like um, really you know, this is this is the part of the tree that I want to keep right this this lower trunk and the side branch so let's take off the bag see this root right here very nice to 
hold this thing back. And you know what? Let me look at this again. Is the root coming from the tree or is it coming from this stowaway plant? I don't know. Oh, it's coming from the tree. Good, good, good. Okay, so now it is time to cut it off. You see that root right there? That's coming from the tree. Okay, good. I, I thought I got faked out by this thing. Grass or whatever that is there. Anyways, let's uh, cut it off. Okay, first I have to undo this wire that is down here. And... Cut it right there. Okay. There it is. This will be the new shorter tree. And this right here will go into its own pot. Right, here we go. Got it in its new pot. This is just kind of a mixture of potting soil, perlite, uh, lava rock, bark. It's loose, but also retains water. I mean, honestly, this tree, I don't know what to do with it to, to be real about it. Um, I just didn't want it to go to waste, and I wanted to experiment with air layer and black pine. So that's that. This is the top taken off of this. And then let's look at the part of the tree you want to keep. All right, here we go. Here is the part of the tree that I want to keep. You know, this part was much easier to bend and then shape. And um, I can keep it shown as far as its size. You know, I'll, I'll let the tree kind of develop and, and ramify over time. And this right here needs to be cut down even further. So I will start right there. Cut that off, and then I'm going to um, go down a little bit deeper so that I can have a nice, flush, clean area. Uh, there's no reason to make this a, a gin. Um, not necessary. There we go. We're just going to add a little cut paste to this. Hide that wound. I've used my knob cutter to get down a little bit deeper, give it a little bit of a concave cut, and um, now we're just going to seal this wound. We are heading into the winter months here in Seattle, which means that there's going to be a heck of a lot of rain every single day for the next five, to five months, five to six months. So Seattle is rain for six months and then dry for six months. Rain for six months, then dry for six months. Okay, and there's that, and there is this. And now this tree will start its conversion into a. Little show entry. I need to wire this down a little bit into a different angle, maybe back here. Kind of fill in that spot. Um, okay, so here we go. I've removed the air layer, left this here with all this, all these buds coming out of this area. Um, some people want, will, would remove them, but I'm leaving them because it, what it'll do is they'll help kind of compartmentalize this area, heal it up a little bit faster. Um, I'm not going to do any needle plugging. I will leave it as is. 
because uh, I want all these needles right here to basically do its job and kind of help heal the tree. And then as far as this part goes, you see how this this trunk is the size of my thumb. This part is thinner than my pinky. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll let the top of this tree now continue to grow as long as possible. I'll leave one sacrificial trunk or leader. And then um, over time, this the difference between this branch and this trunk will gradually kind of come to a nicer taper. And um, once it does that, then I'll start training some of the branches to, to go in certain ways and develop more. So that's it. There it is. So this once very tall, leggy, um, not so attractive pine that I found actually um, in a garden by where I work is now something that's more recognizable as bonsai. You know, it's, it's still some years from development into an actual bonsai, but you know, it's good pre pre bonsai material that has a lot of movement now compared to what it was before. So two things achieved, turning really raw stock into something usable and also air layering black pine in this video. So there it is. Just takes time. It's easy. It just takes time. Nothing difficult about it. See you on the next one.